Hello there, welcome back to the channel. This is only going to be a quick video as I have actually done a more extensive video on this race in the past, which was on my Obscure Races um, series, and that is on the progenitors. Now, who exactly were they? They were recently referenced in Star Trek Discovery in the 32nd century. Uh, some of their technology had been discovered by the Romulans or something to that effect. As of the uploading of this particular episode, we still don't know the ins and outs of it. But I thought I would do a video just explaining who the progenitors were and a couple of theories about them. In basic terms, billions of years ago, this race of humanoids rose up from the planet and began to explore the galaxy. They didn't find anything recognizable out there. Now, of course, there are many non-humanoid sentient races like the Tholians, as an example, who exist across the galaxy who are not uh, humanoid bipedal species are even vaguely similar. So for some reason, because they didn't like not seeing lots of other humanoids around the galaxy, they decided to seed the galaxy in some way using a technology we now know must exist that allows, which is highly sought after and could be potentially a very devastating weapon. Again, as of the uploading of this, not too sure exactly how that technology works, but they were able to seed the galaxy many worlds with their genetic material and cause the evolution of humanoid races as we know them in the 24th and by this point 32nd century. But who exactly were they and what else do we know about them? Well, the only one we ever see is a construct, a holographic recreation of one that could only be created by combining the DNA from various different worlds that they had seeded. This information was chased by the Federations and humans specifically, the Romulans and by extension the Vulcans, the Klingons and the Cardassians, all learning that they shared this common genetic ancestor, which is why humanoids are humanoids. It's also why they're genetically compatible. It's why Spock can exist when two species that evolved in such different ecosystems are still able to interbreed, which there's a big suspension of disbelief there in general. But of course, that original entity is the only one we've ever seen. We don't know if their race still exists or if they went extinct evolved into something else. Maybe they're the Q for all we know. Probably not. But that's effectively who they were. Now there are a few running theories that are speculated by, shall we say, by scholars and theologians and members perhaps even of Starfleet who think a few different things. One of them is the original creator, uh, the one, not the original creator, the one that we saw was portrayed by the wonderful Salome Jens, who would later go on to portray the female changeling as part of the Dominion. So there is a theory which is founded, I think, purely on that and a vague aesthetic similarity between how the changelings choose to present themselves as sort of a very, very generic humanoid and the way the original progenitors looked. As a result, they think that perhaps the progenitors, as we know that the changelings originally started out as solids, may have evolved into the changelings over billions of years. It's possible, but I don't think that's actually founded in anything. Another theory is that actually the progenitors are also a race known as the preservers. The preservers went around preserving people from different worlds that they saw going, thinking were gonna go extinct. Sometimes this would be an entire race. They think a species is gonna die off, so they'd move it. Other times it was a culture or civilization they felt was threatened on their world, even though the overall species would survive they would take, say, for example, a few humans from Earth because they felt that the culture of that particular humans was about to be wiped out by another group of humans, so they preserved it. And there's a theory that perhaps the progenitors and the preservers are the same people. There is also another race that was encountered by Kirk who claimed to have been the first. And they were just, they, you know, they were just gamesters by this point. They were just brains in a jar. And it's possible that those two are connected, but I don't think there's enough evidence to really say that any of these speculations are accurate or likely. They're just fun speculation, I think. We know relatively nothing about them. We don't really know at this point how they spread their genetic material across the universe. In another universe, another ancient race of humanoids seeded the galaxies with the genetic material to force the evolution of their kind again. Uh, that's in the Stargate universe, and those are the Ancients who did a similar thing and basically caused the evolution of loads of humanoids all over the galaxies. But, although that seems like a likely way the progenitors may have done this, it doesn't necessarily conclusively mean that's how it was done. So, we know next to nothing about them. The only thing we do know 
is that they didn't like that they didn't see any humanoids in the galaxy and felt that they wanted to see more of themselves everywhere and they seeded life and this caused the evolution of all the races we know love and fear across the milky way galaxy and beyond by this point it's possible and very and i think indeed likely that many of the humanoids are not interrelated and have independently evolved through some form of convergent evolution but at the same time we do know that the humans the voth the vulcans the romulans uh the klingons the cardassians and maybe the bajorans as Bajor as there's a theory about a relationship between cardassians and bajorans are all definitely definitely descended from them but that is everything we currently really know about them. They were certainly very advanced, they were very old, and they lived at a time when the galaxy was a very different place, a very young galaxy with probably less habitable worlds. So they're probably, even if they weren't responsible for the creation of many of the humanoids directly and other races, the sheer terraforming of worlds that they likely went around doing as well, as in and of itself led to the evolution of probably countless sextillions of different species, not just sentient, but otherwise. Every, every world that's habitable has other things on it other than just the sentient race. So everything there may owe its existence to them, but that's again, it's just a speculation. Let me know in the comment section below if you think any of the random theories about them might be correct or if you have any of your own. And we'll, I'll probably do a follow-up to this when we finally know a bit more about them later on.